Hi, my name is Sofia. I'm a physician in Houston, and in this video I'm going to talk about carbs. It seems everyone these days is worried about carbs. But is this concern justified, or is our carb aversion damaging our health? Our culture is not immune from nutritional confusion. For example, it's a very popular belief that dairy is needed for bone health, despite the fact that it's not, and despite the fact that dairy wasn't even part of our species diet for almost all of human history. With carbs, people worry it will make them gain weight or that eating them is unhealthy and must be avoided. But is that right? Or is this another example of a popular but inaccurate idea? Most plant foods are naturally high in carbohydrates, so if we shun carbs, we're actually shunning some of the healthiest foods that exist, and we're also shunning our body's main source of energy. So how did this relatively recent fear of carbs all come about? Well, there's a world of difference between eating fruits, vegetables, and whole grains that all contain carbohydrates versus eating donuts, candy, and other processed foods. There's no reason to avoid the carbs found naturally in plant foods, however, processed foods have had virtually everything that's beneficial stripped away and are no longer healthy. So low-carb advocates have a kernel of truth when they say refined sugars, white bread, and other processed foods high in carbs are unhealthy. Indeed, they are unhealthy. But it's not because they're high in carbs, it's because they are processed foods that have had all of their nutrients stripped out. Fruits and other plant foods that are high in carbs, like vegetables, legumes, and grains, contain fiber, phytonutrients, antioxidants, minerals, and vitamins, which are critical for our health. They are important in so many ways, from protecting our eyesight by helping prevent macular degeneration to helping fight infections and cancer. Yet these immensely healthy foods have been grouped in the minds of many with white bread and table sugar. Robert Atkins is considered the father of the low-carb movement. He pushed the remarkable position that if people ate fat and protein, but eliminated or significantly minimized carbs, they would be more slender and healthy. Calories were not important, allowing people to embrace some of the unhealthiest foods and in large amounts. It's not hard to see the appeal of this movement. Gluttony is permitted and encouraged, and people think they are sticking to a diet while loading up on steak, fried chicken, butter, bacon, eggs, and cheese. The chair of Harvard's Department of Nutrition said the Atkins diet was nonsense and dangerous. The prestigious medical letter on drugs and therapeutics called the diet unbalanced, unsound, and unsafe. But no amount of criticism stopped the diet's popularity and the newfound fear of carbs that it perpetuated. Here is Dr. Atkins at a nutrition event confronted by physicians who accuse him of making baseless health claims to sell his diet and his products. He said he's working on the data, but he's been making this claim for a long time. No, I haven't. And that's what I, excuse me. But I haven't excuse been me. making that claim. You just did, and you don't have Before. the evidence to back it up. Now, this diet's been out there for 30 years, or close to and 30 years. And I haven't years. been able to fund a study. I, I've uh, asked Excuse me, asked excuse me. 10 million books in print and you can't fund the study? I say, this is not for the public good. This is marketed. This is a money-making proposition. Since Dr. Atkins brought up money, I should mention that in just one year, Atkins Nutritionals reported $100 million in revenues, according to the New York Times. The low-carb entrepreneurs have certainly tapped into something very powerful, people's desperation to lose weight. But they have done so by introducing serious confusion about basic nutrition to the detriment of people's health. Low-carb, high-fat diets are not good strategies for sustainable or healthy weight management. One reason is that from a metabolic standpoint, it's a lot easier for our bodies to burn carbs for energy and to store fat as fat. Of course, if you're eating too many calories in general, then carbs get metabolized into fat, but the process of turning carbs into fat 
costs the body a lot of energy. In fact, about 28% of the energy content of the carbs is lost when they're transformed into fat. So it's a pretty wasteful thing to do in terms of energy. And our body doesn't just waste energy unless it has to, because it's something not favorable for survival. It's also much harder to overeat plant foods that are naturally high in carbohydrates, like fruits and vegetables, because they are typically less calorically dense than high fat foods, but come packaged with lots of fiber that promotes satiety, so you feel full before you eat too much. In contrast, high fat, low carb foods can easily trick our brains into overeating because they are much more calorically dense and lack fiber. If you eliminate carbohydrates from your diet and put your body into a state of ketosis where it's forced to burn fat to make ketones for energy, it can lead to short-term weight loss. But keeping your body in a state of ketosis is neither sustainable nor healthy, nor does it fulfill the long-term promise of effective weight loss. Indeed, observational population studies show that high-protein, high-fat diets are associated not only with more health problems, but also with obesity. For example, the Health Adventist Study Cohort done in Canada and the United States studied the health of omnivores, flexitarians, lacto-ovo-vegetarians, and vegans, and found that the only population that was not overweight was the vegan one. And research like the Broad study in New Zealand has shown that the greatest amount of weight loss long-term without calorie restriction or mandated exercise occurred on a plant-based vegan diet high in unprocessed carbohydrates. The longest living populations in the world have thrived on carbohydrate-centric diets with foods like corn, wheat, rice or barley as the main staple with lots of vegetables and fruits. These populations are sometimes referred to as blue zones. One example is the Okinawans of Japan. In their traditional diet, they derive close to 85% of their calories from carbohydrates, with most of these calories coming specifically from sweet potatoes. This emphasis on whole, unprocessed foods high in carbs served the Okinawans very well. They were not obese, had much lower rates of disease that plagued the West, like cardiovascular disease and colon cancer, and they were the longest living population on the planet until they changed their diets. Older Okinawans who continue their traditional way of eating have a very high functional capacity and the longest survival rates in Japan, the country that already has the world's longest lived population. By the way, traditional diets in Japan involve huge amounts of rice. Many Japanese people eat rice almost with every meal, even breakfast, and Japan has the lowest obesity rates in the developed world. Researchers from the University of Tokyo found, after reviewing the outcomes of over 200,000 people, that low-carbohydrate diets were associated with significantly higher risk of all-cause mortality. And researchers on behalf of the International Lipid Expert Panel found that those who follow a low-carb diet were 50% more likely to die of cardiovascular disease, 51% more likely to die of cerebrovascular disease, and 36% more likely to die of cancer. Even research funded by the Atkins organization itself found that those who followed low-carb diet had 68% more constipation, 60% more headaches, 38% more halitosis, 35% more muscle cramps, 23% more diarrhea, and 25% more general weakness. Of course, halitosis and constipation, no matter how bad, are the least of the low-carb problems when the data shows significantly higher all-cause mortality rates, 50% increased likelihood of dying from cardiovascular disease, 51% more risk of dying from cerebrovascular disease, and 36% more likely to die of cancer. It's extremely important to eat a varied and large amount of whole plant foods every day, something that is exceedingly difficult, if not impossible to do, if you're displacing plant foods with animal foods in a misplaced effort to avoid carbs. Yes, 
Refined carbs are to be avoided as they don't promote good health. But don't replace processed foods with meat, eggs, and cheese. Replace them with foods that actually promote your health like oatmeal, vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, and yes, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and bananas too. Instead of going with one headline or another, let's use our common sense and look at the mainstream consensus and weight of nutritional evidence. And on that point, the largest organization of nutrition professionals in the country, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, after analyzing the published studies, concluded not only that plant-based vegan diets are healthy and appropriate during all stages of life, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescents, older adulthood, and for athletes, they also concluded that the diet reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes by 62% and the overall cancer risk by 18%. It's easy to get the right proportions of nutrients, including carbs and protein, plus lots of antioxidants and phytonutrients that promote health, simply by eating a well-balanced diet of whole plant foods. And as no small added benefit, eating a plant-based vegan diet is also an effective and sustainable way to manage your weight too. Thank you very much, and I wish you good health.